is good, everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have another fantasy booking style video for you guys, and today it is everything TLC 2020. I believe the pay-per-view is next weekend, correct? It's not this weekend, right? No, it is next weekend. I think it's... Oh, wait, is it? It's this weekend. It's actually this weekend. Uh, that's my, it's on me. That's on, that's, that's on me. So the pay-per-view is this weekend, TLC. You guys know they gotta get the gimmick pay-per-view in there. They gotta pitch it to you. It's like, you know, you gotta get your hell in a cell in. You gotta get your ladder matches, your TLC. You gotta get your Royal Rumble. I love the Royal Rumble. Keep the Royal Rumble where it is every year. Gotta get your Elimination Chambers in there, and you guys know how it is. So this year, lining up, I think the card's actually pretty good, but if you guys didn't know how these videos work, how we're gonna do it is I'm gonna run through the entire TLC card, break down the matches, and pretty much the video is, I'm in charge. Vince McMahon came to me and said, MDT, you're in charge. What would you do? What would you like to do? You get to control everything. Give me a script for the show. Let's book it. And that's what this video is. I'm gonna run through the TLC TLC card, breaking down the matchups, telling you guys what I think should happen, and if I were, you know, if I had full control over it, this is how I would book it. So that's what we're going to do here today, guys. So let's shut the hell up and dive in to TLC 2020 and fantasy book this show. All right, let's go ahead and get this out of the way, because you guys know it's my least favorite part of, of television. We got the Women's Tag Team Championships. You got Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler taking on Asuka in a to-be-determined member. Now, you guys know it was supposed to be Lana. That ended up being thrown out, or, you know, thrown out. Lana got hurt or whatever by Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler, so now she is no longer in the matchup. I'm not exactly sure who they're going to replace Lana with. I don't know if it'll end up being Lana to begin with or if she'll end up coming back in that role or whatever, but uh, I don't like the Raw Women's Champion being involved in this. I would like to see her doing other things or just fighting Shayna Baszler or somebody one-on-one -on -one for the title. Maybe that's where this is going to lead to, possibly. I could see that taking place, maybe, but uh, I would just have... I don't think it's going to happen. I think Shayna and Nia are going to win, but if I were taking care of it, I would uh, get Nia Jax Jacks out of my face, and I would put the Women's Tag Team Championships on whoever. I don't care. Asuka's better than both of these women. I think whoever her tag partner is will fit in nicely. I don't know really what's going on there, but uh, I would have Asuka win. Asuka and whoever the partner is would be be new champions. Make make Asuka a double champ. She's the GOAT. Next up, guys, we have Sasha Banks and Carmella. Now, this one's very interesting to me, but the way this thing's going is I'm enjoying Sasha as champion. You know, we waited for a very long time to get her as champion, and now that we have her as champion, I don't think it needs to change anytime soon. We're still building towards some great matchups that we're going to get in the future. I think Carmella, unfortunately, is just a stepping stone in that direction, so I think that I would have Sasha Banks go over for sure. No reason for her to lose the championship here. Wouldn't make any sense for the bigger picture, and I think that Sasha needs to retain and continue to build herself up, much like Bailey did when she had the championship, building herself up and up and up and up. I would have Sasha go over Carmella. Wouldn't think another football thought about it. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we have a matchup that I'm really intrigued with, and that is going to be the Hurt Business, right? We got my boy Cedric and my boy Shelton. Now, Cedric Alexander, one of my favorite talents in all of WWE, going one-on-one, -on -one, not one-on-one, -on -one, you dumb jackass. Does this look like one versus one? This is two and two. But right here, we have the New Day, Xavier Woods, and Kofi going, I keep wanting to say one-on-one. -on -one. Why do I do that? So, Cedric Alexander and the Hurt Business, I think that Cedric Alexander has really been building up his momentum, man. I would really, really love to see the Hurt Business capture the Raw Tag Team Championships, much like uh, you guys know the Street Profits took on the New Day at Survivor Series between both teams. I said that the Street Profits needed to win to really, you know, make the public known. If you got, you know, a lot of people know who the New Day are. You should know who the Street Profits are, but, you know, I feel like that put them on the map, getting that win, that big win over New Day. So do the same thing. I know that Shelton Benjamin's an old head, but I love Shelton Benjamin. I think he's great. Um, I think he's good in this role. He's a great wrestler, great athlete. He looks good with Cedric. I like them as a team, as the Hurt Business. I'd say put the Raw Tag Team Championship straps on Cedric. Cedric and Shelton Benjamin. Wouldn't think another thing about it. MVP's probably going to be present. Bobby Lashley's already U.S. Champion. Put all the titles over there. You guys know the classic faction championship stranglehold. I can see that happening. I'm going Cedric Alexander and Shelton over the New Day. I think that's the best thing to do, and I think that would be cool. So, Raw Tag Team Champions are now the Hurt Business, and maybe you could even do, like, a cool evolution thing, like uh, Raw Tag Team Championships. Uh, you got Cedric in there, and then maybe Cedric, I know he recently joined them, but maybe it could be, like, a ploy to get him to the top. You could really make Cedric, uh, since he's the young gun, he's the young buck in the group, man. Bobby and Shelton and MVP are much older. This is a great way to thrust Cedric up into that into that middle card, upper talent level. So I say that's what I would use it for. Use the Hurt Business to propel Cedric into that main event push later on in his career. So this could be the stepping stones towards that. That's how I would start this. So I'd have the Hurt Business capture the Raw Tag Team Championships. Now after that, guys, we got three pretty interesting matchups.
that's probably the three most interesting. We have Randall Keith going on, going on, I don't know what I'm saying. Randy Orton versus The Fiend Bray Wyatt. Of course, we do have Alexa Bliss with The Fiend right here. So you got Alexa Bliss, The Fiend, Randy Orton. We have seen, how many times have we seen Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt in some sort of matchup? Like, we've seen it a billion times. And honestly, this is one of those matchups that I'm not really, I really don't even know where to go with it because for me, The Fiend gimmick and character was ruined for me like over a year ago at Hell in a Cell. And it just, it just never got picked up for me, man. You know, he came back, he ended up winning the Blue Universal title. He got fed to Goldberg. He's been killed and beaten and, and destroyed many times. He's been fighting Braun and it's just it's just a never ending just, he makes me sigh when I see him. Such a badass look to a character. Such a great character that WWE literally cut the head off of immediately. Like it was it was just, it was so good and they had a gold mine. They still have one technically, merch and all that stuff, but dude, they really really dropped the football. They fumbled it. They fumbled it away and now we have Randall Keith going one on one with the Fiend and I know that Edge is in the in the headlights of Randy Orton. That is where this whole thing is building towards Edge versus Randy Orton. And I'm not sure if Randy Orton's going to capture the WWE Championship and Edge is going to return at the Rumble and win the Rumble. That's what I'm thinking is going to take place. But getting Randy Orton the Championship would only live through him beating the Fiend here. And I know I'm fantasy booking it. And if that's where we're going with it, I mean, I'm not booking eight months in advance. It's just, I don't, I don't freaking know, man. It is making my head hurt. I guess I'd go with Randy Orton to win, but he's had a weird sort of come up it's this year with him losing to Keith Lee in a matter of seconds. He was beaten by Drew McIntyre many times and then won the title and then lost and then he got put, you know, he got put in the ambulance. I mean, it's just a bunch of ish going on that makes my head hurt and I don't know. It seems like Alexa Bliss and The Fiend is kind of giving The Fiend more momentum, but I'm gonna, ah... Uh... But if The Fiend beats Randy Orton, how can you give him a WWE Championship opportunity? I'm going with Randy Orton. Just, just Randy Orton. The Fiend's dead to me. Randy Orton. Next up, guys, we have a TLC match. Drew McIntyre taking on AJ Styles. Now, you guys know that AJ Styles does have his big man. I don't have a figure of him just yet. I'm sure we're going to get that one day. But for now, that does not exist. We have the TLC match between AJ Styles and Drew McIntyre. WWE title on the line. TLC match. This match should absolutely smack. We already know what AJ AJ Styles is capable of, uh, capable of in the TLC matches. Reference to Dean Ambrose in 2016, John Moxley style. This matchup should slap. You got the big man Drew. You got AJ Styles. Very innovative. Very great. This is just a stepping stone on the WWE Championship tour of Drew McIntyre. I really don't even know why the man lost to Randy Orton. Really made no sense. Should have just kept the title going there. But Drew McIntyre is the champion. I think it's going to stay this way. I would have Drew go over here. I'm thinking maybe this is going to lead to AJ Styles and Omar. Almost. Is that how you pronounce it? I think this is going to be a way to maybe have them feud in the future and AJ Styles kind of lift that guy up and put him over and get him in the limelight. So maybe that's where we're going with it. I'm not entirely sure, but I would have Drew McIntyre defeat AJ Styles and uh, that, that's where I'm going with that. And then last but not least, guys, we have the matchup that I'm most excited for. No doubts about it. I mean, we got my boy Kevin Owens. We got the big dog Roman Reigns in here. Two of my favorite champions on MDT, no doubt about it. You got the MDT champ, extreme champ going head to head. Roman Reigns is the hottest thing in wrestling. I mean, you couldn't derail him. As much as I would love to see Kevin Owens dethrone Roman Reigns, and I know I'm in a position of power. I could book it. Anything I say goes. I could put Kevin Owens over and say, you know what? Kevin Owens is the GOAT and give it to him. But since Roman Reigns is on such a hot streak, bro, I couldn't pull the trigger on it. Just because it's something I want doesn't mean it's the best thing for television. Doesn't mean it's the best thing for these talents right now. And for that reason, I have to go with Roman Reigns beating Kevin Owens. This is a TLC match. This is going to absolutely smack. We know what these guys are capable of. Reference to, was it Royal Rumble 2017, I think, when Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns locked up for the Universal Championship, but it was uh, Kevin as the champion. He had the Red Universal Championship, and we were building towards that. That matchup was amazing, and I want to say, wasn't it like Extreme Rules, or it was a TLC match or something? I don't think it was TLC. I think it was like an Extreme Rules match or something. About to knock the John Brown camera over. But that matchup absolutely slapped titties, but I think Kevin Owens will fall here to Roman Reigns. Roman Roman Reigns will win, and I thought about having The Miz cash in, but that would be stupid as hell. If The Miz cashed in right here, I would have him lose. He would lose immediately to a spear, so we're not going to waste the money in the bank like that, but Kevin Owens would fall to the big dog Roman Reigns, and that is how I would book the thing, because Roman Reigns is on a crash course. I know there's talks of Goldberg showing up. I know there's talks of things like that. That would be absolutely abysmal. I, I think if I was in charge immediately, I'd pick up the phone and say, Goldberg, get out of my face, and I'd hang up right in his mouth. But anyways, guys, before 
before we get out of here, we got to get into our random shout out, which is going to go to Bryce Pitts 01 here. Bryce Pitts says, MDT, don't cross that line. MDT fans, what line? The song, you cross the line as the outro goes. I get this question probably every single John Brown video, and everybody wants to know what the song is called. The song is called Broken Pieces, I think, and it's by a band called Mind Slip, if I'm not mistaken. So, Mind Slip, Broken Pieces, if you YouTube search it, it will come up. I don't know if it's on iTunes, Spotify. I don't know if any of that is true. I, I don't know, Brad. I don't make the rules. I just break them. So, huge shout out to Bryce Pitts for that. So, if you guys did not know, never ever cross the line. I said don't cross the line. You cross the line. I've been